my greetings to you my dear colleagues i have been asked to speak on a very interesting and relevant topic that bothers not only educational institutions but all institutions in general all over the world and that is how an institution renews itself self renewal of an institution when i see cambridge university which is about 4 800 year old when i see classic university live for 100 and more how did they survive normally after the inception the intensity of developing the institution is very high but as the years roll by the intensity decreases and the performance dips how an institution kicks itself and becomes better renews itself and that is the topic of discussion that i want to have today watch this quotation i like it very much life is not a mountain that has a summit it's not just a mountain that you have to climb and reach on top nor is it a riddle that has an answer life has no answers the moment you answer one question another question comes up the moment you find answer for that question a new answer question comes up this is going to happen it is not a game that has a final score it doesn't have a score life is endless unfolding and endless process of self discovery we go on discovering ourselves in your own life peep into your own life you find that what you found was the challenge when you started your career is no more a challenge but there are fresh challenges ahead you have to find answers for those challenges you have to discover yourself every day every minute every second and it is an unpredictable dialogue between potentialities and life situations suddenly you realize yes i was capable of doing this but i didn't do that before you realize your potentials much later and then wonder why did i not use the potentials you must have a constant dialogue with your potentialities and situations in life that we find rewarding experience i have taken so much care to write each word on the screen give more thought to it an organization's ability to renew itself hinges upon individuals please remember even the longest brazilian cotton the staple length is only 2 inches cotton staple is never more than 2 inches long but the 2 inches long cotton thread can make a rope of 100 meters how can 2 inch staple cotton can make 100 meter rope it is only by the proper overlap of one thread over the other that institution becomes immortal rope becomes longer similarly though individuals are not important for the institution but it is the individuals only who create institutions it is only by the overlap of one life of the individual or other seamlessly that makes an institution live for long time remember the whole life of human being so far on earth has not depended on a person but a person has guided the destiny of an institution so only by the overlap of the life of one individual or the other life becomes seamless and endless it is a waning of the heart and spirit not lack of material mind that threatens us remember i have seen some schools on the way to tamil nadu when i was a principal of the college i never thought i would ever go into a school education at that time i went to see a school i mentioned the name also is called triveni academy it was a roman empire 1200 students studying there huge structure the typical monolithic structures that we had i was awestruck though i was managing a college but i could see my college was not even 100th of what the school was amazing but what has happened to it now it is non existent it looking like a fossil now and the kitchen equipments are so not even a single soul stays there it is almost like ghost managed school nobody there why materials were plenty advantages were good 
but the people failed. That's what I said him. It is the waning of the heart and the spirit, not the building that matters. A few mistakes were done and people did not learn from the mistakes and they get augmented and the whole institution came crashing down. It is non-existent now. My friends, I want you to remember, many years ago we used to say, industry is close, factory is close, but nothing will happen to schools. Schools have their longevity, they live for 100 years. It is both a boon and a curse. Boon because somebody may come up and revive it. Curse is because we become complacent, nothing would happen to the schools. And today it is not so. Schools also close down if they have not performed well. Because there is a keen sense of competition between schools and schools. Each one vying for admission with another school is going to be a big challenge now. Therefore, please remember young institutions, businesses and human beings have one key common commodity. They are all flexible, they are all eager, open, curious, unafraid of doing things and are willing to take risks. Watch each word I have thought and written there. When the child is very young, you would have seen the child holding the tip of its feet, toe and puts it in the mouth. You try it. It is impossible. You can't even reach the toe by bending down. How the body is flexible at that time? Child is not scared. It can put his hand anywhere. Child is eager to learn things. Similarly, when the institution is new, very young, everybody is flexible. They want to do this thing, that thing, and all that is perfectly all right. But the sad part is, as the time passes, complacency sets in. Yeah, we are good. I am good now. I can, I can make out. I have experience of running. Please remember, your experience is of no value at all because you can't predict what kind of situations come tomorrow. Tomorrow's situation may be totally different. It can shock you out of your wits and you don't know how to handle it. That means you are again starting from base zero. You are going to start from base zero. Never be complacent that I am good in it. I know it. I can manage it. No. It doesn't work that way. Therefore, Every day world throws a new challenge to you and if you don't know how to handle it, if you are not eager, you are not flexible, the complacency will overtake you. That is the problem. The individual's role in institutional renewal requires each person to face and look beyond imminent threats. There are threats for every school. This is likely to happen tomorrow. Okay, now this CBSC has taken out CCE. What will happen now? 80, 20, how will I manage that? These are imminent threats. I have a request to make. You are the chosen few. You are the most important leaders of academic life. Don't think of tomorrow. Don't think of today evening. If you plan for tomorrow, you are a good manager. Think for next 5 years and 10 years, what is the scenario going to be? Then you become a visionary. Institutions are rebuilt renewed by these visionaries, not managers. Managers can say, okay, this bus is not working, I'll send another bus. Okay, this food is not good, I'll change the food. These are all the managers' responsibilities. But you can be visionaries without bothering about imminent threats. Think of the threats that loom large, beyond the scope of horizon. There may be bigger threats. Watch them. What could be the threat? Yes, totally new curriculum may come. And teachers may come from different parts of the world here. Or your teachers would leave. And online education becomes a norm. If online education becomes a norm, where will your students be? Are you geared up to do that? These challenges are many in number. Ultimately, we need a vision that there is something worth saving for ourselves. Through this vision, institution begins to revisit itself, renew itself. Kind of a vision statement you should make. Watch the picture carefully. There is a picture of a person called Jean Francois Gravelet. He was given the nickname The Great Blondin. This big moustache man was very successful 
in walking on ropes, tight rope walking. He created all kinds of things. In New York, walked from one pillar to another pillar on a rope, and he became so famous for walking on the rope. He was called the Great Blondin. One day, he thought of a new experiment. He tied a rope across Niagara Falls. I don't know how many of you have seen that. Niagara Falls is so deep and you fall it, you are falling in the abyss. That kind of a valley, he tied a rope and he wanted to walk on that. Thousands of people gathered to watch him. Watch him. How does it grow? He shouted loudly, Do you think I can cross the Niagara Falls on the rope? All people standing down below shouted, Yes, Blondin, we know that you can do it. You can do it. You will do it. Everybody cheered him. Then he smiled and said, I got a wheelbarrow. Now I'll not only walk, I'll take the wheelbarrow on the road. Can somebody come and sit in the wheelbarrow? I'll take you across Niagara. You'll be surprised. The same people who had confidence in him, saying that you are fantastic, you can walk across the rope. Not even one volunteer to come and sit in the wheelbarrow. Finally, he had to carry his secretary, Harry Polkar, on his back and walk. Nobody came in the wheel, uh, wheelbarrow. You know why? Getting people to believe is not easy. They knew that he is confident, but why take risk? Let him go. If I go in the wheelbarrow and the whole thing falls down, I'm dying. Therefore, I don't want to do it. Same challenge all leaders have. You have the confidence of running the institution. But do you think all the people with you have the same vision, have the same confidence? This is most important. How to get all people in? All in I call. That means buying the people's faith in what you are doing. Are you capable of doing that? Can you do that? That is most important. Convincing your employees, your ideals, sell your dreams to them. To such an extent, they become part of your dream. They should say, it is our dream, not our leader's dream. We dream it. Can we do that? They, in fact, push all people to pull this institution in the same direction. We have people, people pulling the, this chariot as it were, a school, pulling half of them pulling this side, remaining half pulling on that side. That will make the remain, institution remain there only. It should not happen. Can you convince your people to come on one side and pull the institution towards glory. There are seven steps involved in it. Seven steps. Watch these steps carefully. Defining the burning platform. What do you mean by burning the platform? Challenges. Tell them these are the challenges we have got. We are on the platform already. It is burned. It is burning now. It's got fire. How do you do it? Secondly, create a customer focus. What our students want. What our parents want. Can you convince all of them to accept that? And third one is develop agility. Over a period of time we become slow, we become non-functional, we become dead. How to keep yourself agile all the time, active all the time, keep your eyes sharp, ask your people to watch sharp, what is going to happen now, look at the frontiers and see what can be done. All the three are the responsibility of the leadership and that's you, you are the leader. Then second one is sharing everything. Whatever I know, what new lesson plan I have made, what new thing I have learned, can I share with my people? And also partner with your talent. Many of us have talents but don't use the talent. I say, why should I do it for the school, you know? I am very good in it but I don't want to do it. Can you partner with somebody? Forget about partnering with somebody. Can you partner with your own talent? These two are to be done by the individual teachers, individual people in the organization. And the last two, root for each other. If somebody is failing, do I go and help him without his asking? Without her asking? Can I do this for you? Okay, I know you are under pressure. Oh, English paper, lot of valuation to be done. Okay, can you give me 50 papers? I'll help you. I'll do that. I'll help you. At least I can help you to tabulate it. Okay, cultural program, give me some work, I'll do it. Can you, on your own, initiate and get the work done for others? There is the routine for others and establish clear accountability. This is very, very crucial for any group. Yes, I start this program. At the end of the program, where do I land up? 
how does the team perform, what is my group task, if you can do that. And one thing required to all this is belief. Belief in yourself, belief in your team, belief in your vision and belief that it is going to happen. These are the four important beliefs that we should have. And secret of success is the belief factor. There is something beautiful. Some leaders think, why can't our employees believe in what we say? It is a myth that many managements carry. Yeah, our people know, they should listen to what we say. We give them important roles, give them salary. Even on Sundays when they are not well, we are paying salary to them. Then why don't they believe us and follow what we say? It is not done. Nobody commits to a work culture because of a mandate. You send a lovely worded statement, I mentioned there, lovely worded memo. From next Monday, all of you would believe in everything we say. Do you think people would believe that? They laugh at you and throw this memo out. Because you send a memo, people don't believe you. The belief will not come from the memo or because of your position as a leader. It comes from something else. Everyone in the institution joins the organization with their own set of ideas. They bring their own suitcases, bring their own ideas. And I should buy all that idea and push all of them to think in a common direction. This is most important. The bottom line is, leaders most of the time ask people to agree to their strategy. They prepare a strategy, they prepare a line of action, this is to be done, we have decided, you do it. If you tell them they will not do it. Please remember, that is what I put in red there, age of control is long lost. Age of convincing is in. Earlier idea of working like a uh, jamindar and saying, you should do what I am saying, is all gone. Nobody will listen to you. Convince people. If you have the art of convincing, you will get more people to buy into your ideas. Unfortunately, many well-meaning but busy leaders, whether they are managing small number or large number, think like great Blondin who stood on the rope top and said, Can you come with me? They will not come. They will not come. Across the Niagara, they don't take the risk. They imagine that people report to them. Leaders always say, the people report to me, I can do that. People may report to you, but doesn't mean that they repose trust in you. Most important, please remember, it is safe to say, some employees are completely with the leadership. Because they are with you. It is also equally safe to assume, that similar number of people are not with you. They are not with you at all. There is something I use the word, detached indifference. What detached indifference? They are not indifferent to you, detached. You oh, let them do whatever they want, you know. They want to do something, let them do it. It is your job, then it is not their job. This indifference is totally detached. You have seen in your institution at least about 20% people will be like that. They would say, I, I don't know what they do. I will just do what they say. I am not bothered whether successful or not. He says, no, I will do it. That's all. This is called detached indifference. The great blonding had fans to choose to stay safe on the ground. Everybody had confidence in Blondin, but nobody wanted to go on the rope. They wanted to be safe on the ground. Some hoped that you would fail and fall also. If you had failed and fallen down, it would still be a memorable experience. If you walked on this rope safely, it is a memorable experience. Even if you had fallen down, it would be a memorable experience. People want to see that fun. They are not more important. This is how the mind works. Don't interpret the mind. The mind works like that. This is the peculiar way the mind clings to old beliefs. I believe in certain things. That's why I call inferred justification. Inferred, what is justification? Yes, I know it will not work. In fact, R.K. Lakshman drew a very famous cartoon. Very famous cartoon. The factory was on fire. The factory was burning. And the manager was telling the counter clerk, don't keep on grinning here because you proved right. The clerk had told that this will not work, but the manager went ahead and did it, and the factory was on fire. This fellow is smiling now, happy. Happy because he is proved right. He doesn't fellow remember that he is losing his job because the factory is closing. 
don't always go to find justification for your beliefs. Normal human mind does that. I have certain beliefs. I go on is like a PhD thesis. You decide on a topic and go on finding out reasons as to why you are right. You are not finding what is right, but you are trying to prove why you are right. That's not fair. And secondly, there's another way is called cognitive dissonance. This is very important. This is a mechanism to counter the information and contradicts what we think right. Don't you think there are people like that? We always have a belief and we say, yeah, anything other than that is not alright. What I think is alright. And I find people around me who think like me and we form a gang. And please watch this video. It's a lovely video which is produced by based on what uh, our great uh, Plato said. You should read his book, The Republic. It's a magnificent book. Every leader should read it. In The Republic he says, don't blame people. They go by what they have seen and what they have experienced. Please remember you are a product of your experiences. You are a product of your experiences. If your experience has been negative, it is possible that some people remain negative throughout. Some people have positive experience and remain positive. They are a product of that. He gives a beautiful allegory there. Imagine prisoners that have spent their entire lives chained deep inside a cave. They have been chained so that they cannot see behind themselves and they are forced to stare endlessly at the cave wall in front of them. Behind them a fire is burning and between the prisoners and the fire is a raised walkway. Now imagine that each day a menagerie of objects crosses the walkway. Animals and people carrying their wares to market. Their shapes create an intricate shadow play on the wall in front of the prisoners. This is the only world that the prisoners have ever known. The shadows and the echoes of unseen objects. Now, imagine that a prisoner is released. After some time adjusting to the blinding light, the freed prisoner will begin to experience the world outside of the cave for the very first time. And it is like nothing he could have ever imagined. With his new perception of the world, the man will of course want to return to his friends to share his incredible discoveries. But the prisoners cannot recognize their old friend. He appears as all things do. His voice is a distorted echo, and his body is a grotesque shadow. They cannot understand his fantastic stories of the world outside of the cave. To them, it will never exist. This, of course, does not make the world outside of the cave any less real. seen the video some people are tied with their hands 
they have been tied for life all through the life they are like that they are tied in such a way they face only the wall opposite nothing they see nothing behind them they say but behind them there is a road and behind the road there is a fire and every time somebody walks on the road their shadows are seen on the screen in front of them the wall in front of these prisoners all their world is what the shadows they see throughout their life from born till death they are only seeing the shadows there and creating their own impression in the mind imagine one fellow is taken out from that dragged into the outside world he watches the world oh my god what i was seeing in the cave is totally different from what i am seeing now this is a real life he goes back and shouts at his friends and say no no what you are seeing is only the shadow the real life is beautiful it is outside and the people laugh and say this fellow is foolish this is our life this is the belief that's what we say this is the biggest problem confronting the modern leaders today and what we have to do is called rebirth of perception when people come to you they come with a set of perceptions they have the beliefs they have how do you change them you have to change them by very positive strokes i'll give you a classic example michael phelps one of the legendary swimmers of the world an american boy when he was young he was very naughty fellow he would go into the swimming pool his mother would go with him very lazy fellow he would swim very casually the first seven eight rounds and when the final round came he would swim faster he would get a gold medal or otherwise some medal he would get but he was not worried he was not focused on goal mother was worried this boy has tremendous potential but believes that he can be casual how to change his belief finally she hired a person called bob bowman bob bowman was a good swimming coach at that time he went on telling phelps if you get this award nothing for me you are capable of doing far better than this this is useless to you this is a failure to you that is the one he went on showing him mount everest when the fellow was struggling hard to climb ramnagar hill he was showing him mount everest and then he took him to the 2000 olympics and you know what happened young boy got fifth place in olympic he was not happy the coach came back and scolded him idiot you should have got the gold medal you got the fifth rank i am not happy about it pushed him pushed him pushed him and finally phelps started feeling that he is not a some run swimmer he is a top swimmer in the world he must get gold medals and 2004 olympics he got six gold medals and you know what was a block mental block we create ourselves mark speech of germany had scored seven gold medals in olympics and people said is a inhuman act superhuman act impossible nobody can break mark speech record everybody had to and michael phelps also said i got six sir nothing more than that i advise i can get one more nothing more than that you know what bowman did to that what i call rebirth of perception he called mark speech only to address this boy mark speech saw his videos and all that and he said my god you are taller than me your arm lengths are longer you can swim faster and there is no reason as to why you should get not the full medals highest medal is eight why can't you get it you can get it and then mark speech made a statement if anybody can break my record it is only michael phelps do you know what happened in 2008 bailing volume 6 michael fell crossed the boundary and got eight gold medals this is most important a leader has to continuously motivate his team and there should be rebirth of perception whatever perception they have you change it continuously how do you do it as a leader three things we have to do one is engage people engage people engage people means don't tell them that our school is good we are doing very good we are doing that but you know this is not happening what can i do if people help me i can do better no no negative thoughts don't worry about management don't worry about people support you tell people look we have done a good job but we are not good enough for this we are good enough for something better engage people in fact it is a classic example of starbucks from 2008 to 2011 they started sinking Finally, it came to a stage. Starbucks will not work; it will fail. But the CEO of this uh, Starbucks, Howard Schultz, called all these people. He closed uh, 
uh, Starbucks everywhere and called him for a workshop and gave him one simple line, one simple line, without our great coffee, we have no reason to exist. What a lovely quotation. Without our great coffee, please watch every word of it. It is not just coffee, our great coffee. That means Starbucks only can produce the best coffee that can ever be. Our best great coffee, we have no reason to exist. If you produce less than the best, we don't have to exist here. We have to produce the best. He focused it again. Starbucks is number one now in the world. Enabled. This is very crucial for a leader. Taking care of minus problem for the teachers that we have. Don't exaggerate the minor flaws of your teachers, minor flaws of your colleagues. Appreciate them. Even one small work is done. Appreciate. I learnt it from the auto garage fellow. When I came to Bangalore in 1972-73, forget about a tea coffee stall. Uh, there was no auto rickshaw garage or scooter garage. In 74, I had a scooter and every time there is a problem, I don't know where to take it. A young boy came from Tamil Nadu. He wanted to start a garage there. He had no money. I financed him a little and we started a shop. With my investment, he started a shop. Very hard working boy. I tell you today, uh, he is the owner of about 5 to 7 crore property. He's a big man now, Balakrishna. You know, I liked about him is, he had small little boys to help him, assistants. You know, in every automobile shop and repair shop, the owner goes on hitting these small boys for a mistake. Can't you think of it? Mistake you did? Huh? He hit it. But this fellow was very funny. When I was standing there one day, an incident happened. A scooter owner came there and said, what kind of service you have done? Huh? He was less. It doesn't start properly. I spent uh, 60 rupees on servicing now and it is not working properly. Balakrishna opened the hood of the scooter, checked all that and he found there was a very serious mistake the boy had done. The wiping cloth that he uses, it was stuffed there and it was blocking the passage of air. And the air was not working, it was not starting at all. You know what Balakrishna did was something extraordinary. Without the notice of the owner who had come there, he removed the block and wiped it cleanly and kicked and it started. Sir, no problem sir. This is the problem with petrol. There is some kind of a dust in the petrol, that's why it is not starting. The boy has done a good job sir, no problem. And the owner was happy. When the owner went away, he called the boy. Child, do you know what you have done? In the air filter, you have put this waste paper, waste cloth. Don't do that next time, huh? The boy would be eternally grateful to him because this man did not hit him, insult him before a client. This is called enabled. When some teachers make small mistakes, don't highlight it. Small mistakes should be given small time only. Don't spend too much time. What we do is a small incident, we magnify beyond proportion, make it a huge issue and that spreads negativity in the whole atmosphere. Please don't do that. And third is energized. This is most important. By sharing information, if you read little more or you learn some training program elsewhere, Come back and call your people and share the information with them. This is what I learned. New paper you have read, new information you have got. Make a group of your teachers and pass it on to everyone. Even if 10 people read is good enough, send them. And then ask question. Who saw someone doing good something today? You remember I have been telling all the schools of ours that on a Monday morning, start with three students talking about what good I saw, what good I heard, what good I read. Start the week with what is good about the world. Otherwise we are becoming cynical, we are becoming negative. Please don't do that. Tell them what is good about the world. Ask the teachers, can you share something good today? What happened today? Look in the news and tell me what is good about it. Negative, don't worry about it. This is called energizing. Remember, negative thoughts de-energize you. Positive thoughts energize you. As a leader, we have to do that. All that for that is culture of belief. Can you create a culture of belief in the organization? Not yourself. Cultures are like viruses. You get infected with that. If there is negativity in the environment, everybody becomes negative. If there is positivity in the environment, everybody becomes positive. Create a culture of belief, trusting each other, not that letting down each other. Can we do that? And the culture starts at the top. Remember, if you are sulking, you are grumbling, you are crying all through, 
complaining about it. Remember, your whole team will start crying, grumbling and crying. Don't do that. You should be, I, I, as I keep telling, as uh, Powell, Kenneth Powell mentioned, as a leader, if you are scared, don't look scared. If you are hungry, don't look hungry. If you are worried, don't look worried. Because if you show the negative tendencies, it percolates down to the whole masses. That's why I say culture starts at the top. Good leaders drive cultures. Good cultures attract good people. When good people come, good work is done. Leaders always unlock this potential. Sometimes you feel that there is a resistance, there is indifference in the school or in the institution. Sometimes it may appear impossible. It is not impossible. Please believe me, no situation is impossible. That's why I wrote here, impossible is impossible. But nothing is impossible. There is a part to hidden treasure of drive and dedication of people. It is the culture of faith. Can you create faith in the environment? That is the only way to build an organization and make it successful. The era of survival is over. Struggling hard to survive is over. The age of belief is on us. Let us together create that culture of belief and nothing can stop us from realizing our potentials. Once you start realizing your potential, each individual realizes the potential. The accumulated potential becomes a revival strength for an institution. It can not only revive an institution of 10 year old, it can revive an institution which is 1000 year old. It can do that. I think I pray God that you develop this culture of belief in your institution so that the institution can go on self-renewal more. Institution should not depend on somebody for renewal. You should know that process and develop a culture of belief so that the institution goes on the mode of self-renewal. Then you don't have to worry. The institution would remain successful at all times to come. Thank you so much.